Ironically, to study lifespan, you need to find animals that live and die quickly. In Gordon Lithgow's lab, they look at how the genes of a tiny worm called the nematode control its lifespan. We can isolate mutations, naturally occurring mutations, in individual genes. This is an animal with 19,000 genes, but changing just one of those genes can double the lifespan. These worms usually live for 20 days. So this is an old guy, 19 days old. Tissues are degenerating, moving very slowly. He's not eating much, hasn't reproduced now for about 10 days. And there's an accumulation of, of all sorts of protein and lipid damage here. So the lab breeds worms that have had one of their genes changed or mutated. Most of the mutations are harmful to the worm. But just occasionally, changing a single gene has an astonishing effect. It enhances the worm's self-repair mechanisms and enables it to live much longer. So this guy is also 19 days old, and you know he certainly looks old, but he's actually doing a bit better. They're a bit more vigorous moving around a bit more, and it has a mutation in, in one of the 18,000 genes in the nematode, and this mutation, it makes the animal resistant to stress, and it also, it seems, so far anyway, it is making it longer lived. So uh, it's a, a JC1548 or something, and uh, we'll check out what that is, and looks like an interesting new gene. What Gordon just told us is nothing less than amazing. I mean, think about it. Manipulating a few genes here, and changing the lifespan of another organism. And we're not talking about creating a new kind of organism. We're talking about activating genes that are already here, prodding them, getting them to activate. And these genes, these genes are in us as well. It's now possible to breed worms that can live six times longer than normal. The next step is to move on to mammals, First mice, and then, maybe, humans. It's the holy grail. Think of this. Mice and humans were 97% genetically identical. Mice live three years, humans live 100 years, and somewhere in that 3% of genes are regulators that determine the pace at which these two pretty similar organisms age. We know that we can tweak them in mice. We don't get huge increases in lifespan, but we do. And there's a good chance if it works for flies and it works for worms and it works for mice, good chance it'll work for us. <laughs> Biologists here and all over the world may be on the way to cracking the secrets of aging. Perhaps, at long last, we should be taking very seriously the idea that we could live a lot longer than we do now. But that raises another question. How much time do we need? 150 years, 200 years? How much time are we going to get with this new kind of technology? And there's still one thing missing. Because we don't just want more time, but more time when we are young and healthy. <laughs> we need to postpone aging, to drink from the fountain of youth. And there is one scientist, a theoretical biologist from Cambridge, who believes that even this may be possible. I think aging can be postponed indefinitely fairly soon. And the reason I think that is because I think I know how to do it. Aubrey de Grey's theory is based not on merely slowing the aging process down. He's confident that we can actually reverse it. He believes by the time this girl's generation reaches their 50s, science could have discovered how to rejuvenate them. 
what we'd expect to be able to do is to take people who are 55 or 60 maybe and rejuvenate them back to maybe 40. And so it's going to take them another 20 years or maybe a little longer before they get back to being biologically 60. In that 20 years, we can improve the therapies so that some of the things we couldn't fix, we now know how to fix. It means that we're basically solving problems faster than they're catching up with us. De Grey believes that his theory could become a reality because right now, biology is on a roll. Worldwide, hundreds of biologists are searching for aging cures and they're starting to find answers. If he's right, it would only be freak accidents that would prevent full-blown immortality. People are still going to be mortal. People, there's not going to be immortality in the biblical sense from this. People are still going to die from things that have nothing to do with how old they are, like crossing the road carelessly or homicide or whatever. And on average, it looks as though if the risk of dying from those causes stays the same as it is now, people will live to around 1,000, maybe a couple of thousand. Humans living for a couple of thousand years? This would be one of the most radical interventions in human life that science could ever achieve with profound social consequences for future generations. Do we really want it? Every day, about 150,000 people die. And out of those 150,000, about two-thirds, about 100,000, die of causes that young people basically never die of, which means, one way or another, they die of aging. So if we really do all this, if we really postpone aging indefinitely, we will be saving 100,000 lives a day. So if you are worried about inequality or how would we pay the pensions or wouldn't we get bored or whatever it might be, my answer to you is not these problems are silly problems. What's silly is to suggest that they're problems on a scale that justifies condemning 100,000 people a day to an unnecessarily early death forever. Okay, so let's have some wishful thinking. Just imagine, for the moment, that Aubrey de Grey is right. In some near future, science has developed the elixir of life. A potion that will completely cure aging and keep you young forever. Imagine, for the moment, being able to stop the clock, being 18, 25, 35 all over again. Wouldn't that be absolutely incredible? However, I warn you, there's one question still unanswered about immortality, and that is, would you drink this? I could do with a little more time, but 200 years or even like 100 years is pretty long time. I'm happy right now. So yes, I guess I will drink this elixir of life. Would I be the first one trying it? I think life would become mundane. I think that human emotions would suffer profoundly. Sure, absolutely. I like life, and uh, I'd be quite happy to live an awful lot more of it. Too sad when all my loved ones pass. Too sad when my world disappears. Already I'm sick of everything. Not saying I wouldn't, but I'd need to think really carefully about it. I have to think back as to what my best age was now that I've reached this age. It would be so boring to live forever. It would just be awful, I think. I think it would be great if everyone had to live with the consequences of their actions. I think the problem is humans die too soon. I'd rather die, really. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I think that what makes life so worthy is that at the end we die, we all go. Mm -hmm. So this is what makes it so mm -hmm. extraordinary. I was surprised that more young people didn't want to drink from the elixir of life. But then again, young people think they're Peter Pan. They live forever. Just wait till they're 70 years of age and they feel their mortality. But as for me, would I drink from the fountain of youth? Sure. In my next slice of time, I'm going to be searching for our place in time. Just how old is the Earth? And where do we fit in? <laughs>